Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're going to be doing table saws. Additions, changes, accessories, all sorts of things that we can do to this guy custom. Um, I definitely have not done it all, so I'm not saying that, but I'm just going to review some things that I've done. I've had a lot of questions in a lot of videos, so I wanted to make sure that I could put out those answers and answer those people. Um, and specifically, we're going to be reviewing this Delta table saw, which is a low range um, table saw, an introductory table saw maybe even, but even at this range this is something that if you really had no heavy need could last your entire lifetime if you wanted to. So um, being able to mod it out and do fun things to it is great. So let's review it today on Bittner Built. This saw is the Delta 10 inch contractor table saw model 36-725. This table saw has a 120 volts, but can be converted over to 240. It's got a 13 amp motor. It can do a three and a half inch cut when at 90 degrees and a two and a half inch cut when at 45. And it does accept dado blades uh, up to a 13 16 inch width. Now, if you've ever bought a table saw before brand new, you will know that, oh man, it is rough when you're doing the assembly. It takes several hours to do a very good job in attaching the rails and making sure that everything is level. It is a big undertaking. I will not sugarcoat that in the least. So when I bought mine, it went to 30 inch rip. It was 32 long. And I instead, at the exact same time, went on Amazon and purchased the longer rail replacement for the bigger, more expensive saw that goes all the way to 52 and a half, uh, including extra clearance afterwards. So you can, you can get 52. Um, and this was $125 on Amazon, including the front and the back rail. It utilizes the same fence. I mentioned this in another video that I recently did, and so I know right now it is sold out. Um, but let's hope that's temporary. It was from the video that I put. I saw a lot of people go and buy this um, through my affiliate link. So um, hopefully this comes back out pretty soon. The big reason to note that is I bought this so that I didn't buy the 32, spend all this time assembling it, leveling it, all this, and then later on down the line buy the bigger one, have to take everything off and spend an ungodly amount of time putting this one on and leveling it. I just went through the pain once, if that makes sense. Now I've already made an assembly video on this, so I'll have it linked down in the description if you haven't seen it before, but this is my folding table extension wing that I attached a picnic table folding leg system to. That then enables me to have a huge surface, lots of support. If I'm breaking down a sheet good, this pops up. I move the other stuff out of the way. Um, I love this thing and it has lasted a long time. So anything that you can do to be able to enlarge this surface, but then fold it back away again is great and highly recommended. I know a lot of you have very small spaces to work in. Um, there's definitely some people out there that are working in a very small, like eight foot shed that uh, have contacted me. So you guys have very, very small spaces. For me, my space is still getting smaller by the minute for me because as I add more and more tools, I'm like, where do they go? Um, it's starting to become a little bit of an issue for me, especially because I want some more bigger stuff. And so when extending out this table, making use of underneath your table saw, I see people all the time where you have this giant table saw wing that's coming out and there's nothing underneath it. And I'm like, what are you doing? That is missed opportunity for you to be able to have more storage in your shop. Whenever you can grab any little bit of storage for me, I'm doing it. So very first thing I did with this table saw when I bought it was I removed that front delta plate right here. It's just there for looks. And I installed this box system that goes all the way back. And it was for dual purpose. One, um, I have a custom dust collection in here, which we'll get to in a minute. But two, it was also to store accessories right down here. Uh, it might not be super pretty the way I did it, but it actually fit in with the structure of uh, this unit. It's sitting on the uh, cross beam that's down here. And then it's screwed in at both ends of this saw into these. So you could stand on this, it would not move. Um, so I kind of form fit it into the, the 
uh, structure of the saw right here. And then it also aided in my dust collection efforts. So that was great. When I ended up adding this extension, so I added this much longer rail that's right here, the rail needs to be supported. And that support was not coming with the setup that I had. It didn't have any legs. So I actually needed to prop up the end of this table saw. So what I chose to do was to make a rolling skid cart right here with a vertical member at the end. So that vertical member, A, boxes this off, but B, holds up the end of my table saw so that I do not experience any sag. And I spent a lot of time before I did my final screwing over there to ensure that I was maintaining a perfectly level plane before I added in those screws. That's very important. Uh, obviously, I was able to add in this large uh, cabinet. And then I left a large area down here too so that I could put big things like my sled and different jigs that I have down here. I, I recently went through a culling and I got rid of a lot of my jigs. Um, so I do have my big sled here, but I even had some small jigs that were in here at the time. And um, there will be more jigs to come in the future. I've just kind of cleaned house and said, I'm gonna rebuild stuff as I need it. Sorry about the shaky cam, but we're gonna get under the table and move around, so I wanted to have flexibility for that. So let's talk about this extension piece of wood that I put at the end here. I could have slash, I, I, if I did it again, I would probably do this out of MDF, um, just because it's all about making sure that this stays flat permanently, or at least as long as possible. I chose to go at the time with plywood and it still is perfectly level. I have no regrets there, but you know, uh, knowing what I know now, I probably would have done MDF. So when I built this structure, it's very difficult to see. Oh, easier to see over here. I made it similar to a torsion box top. If I was gonna do it again, um, because this was very early on in my woodworking journey, I would just make it an entire torsion box top and I would have put more uh, structure in there. That would have eliminated the need for the obscenely excessive amount of screws that I have under here. Uh, I just went crazy with the glue and crazy with the screws because I really wanted to make sure that this stayed perfectly rigid and flat going forward. And, um, you know, it still has. I'm very happy with it. Obviously, you want to make sure that you are perfectly level or even just the slightest dip down so that when things slide across here, you're not striking. Uh, or in particular, when your fence is moving. You don't hear any noise when I go over that mark right there. If you don't have that perfectly level, um, you're gonna be clunking it every single time and that might throw your, your fence off. So that's no good. Also, I attached it directly to this current metal top through the three screw holes that are available built in. A lot of people will put a router table at the end of their table saw, especially if they have to put some sort of wood top or accessory top onto it. I did as well, and something really stuck with me with this, which is why I bring it up. Even though I don't have it here anymore, I wanted to let you know if you do own this Delta table saw. I went to Lowe's and I bought a router table that they had for sale there for $175. It's the Cobalt. Um, I had no intention of keeping the router itself. I was gonna sell the router. Um, and I was really only buying it for the plate because it was exactly the width of this table saw. So I was like, sweet, I can buy this aluminum stamp table top and put it in here and it'll look great. It'll, it'll, I could still use the fence that comes with it if I wanted to, if I didn't wanna slide this one down because it had some neat accessory and dust collection and stuff on it. When I was trying to figure out how I was putting it in, it's actually built to go right here. So if you don't extend this saw to the 52 mark, it has holes exactly where the three holes on the end of this stamp steel are. And then there's a metal cross member that comes across right here between the two rails. And it perfectly sits on a groove that's made into this aluminum stamp top. So I literally just set it there and it was like, it's made to be there. So if you don't elongate your saw, you might wanna look at that uh, router top from Cobalt because it's perfect for this saw. I installed it here for a little bit and then I removed it and I ended up selling the whole thing because 
For me, having the router at the end of this is very inconvenient because I have my table saw tucked over here and I'd have to pull out my table saw every time. But that one just always stuck with me, so I wanted to let you guys know. All right, the drawers. We're not gonna spend much time on this, but we have all of the pertinent things for the table saw right here. My dados, setups, extra push sticks, stuff like that. This is all of my rag storage for uh, when I'm doing staining and painting and stuff, and I keep scissors in there so I can cut strips. This is some of my, uh, like, jigs, so if we're putting in um, pegs in cabinetry or my door jig, all this type of stuff. Um, I also keep a bag of spacer blocks uh, just because you never know. Um, I have actually pulled these out several times and it's worked out well. And bottom is just some of my extra Tupperware goods, uh, maple edge banding. It's a junk drawer. Um, but that's the whole purpose too is I have these, a whole bunch of extra drawers that I can just throw whatever I want in here, whatever I need to throw in here. Uh, really only one of these apply to the table saw, but it gives me storage for the rest of my space. Got a couple accessories that I have with the table saw. I have my push stick cart that is attached to my fence. Basically all I do is I have a three quarter inch piece of wood that sits in between these two sides of the fence. And so this moves around with me. In all honesty, I love having this here because I have it easily at reach while I'm cutting. Um, I don't need the pencils there, but I, I like pencils, an obscene amount of pencils everywhere in the shop because I'm always leaving them behind. But it is nice just to be able to hit a button and turn on my dust collection and have my push sticks next to me whenever I'm working. This next little improvement is something that most of us have, which is a zero clearance plate. Uh, I have a CNC machine, so I can make these for myself now, but for the longest time I didn't. And so when I bought this saw, I ended up buying these from Kalissa Woodworks. So shout out to them, they're on Etsy. Um, if they're still making these and selling them, I'll link it down in the description below. So I bought three when I first bought the saw, and so I did a full dado stack, I did a 45 bevel, and I did my 90 degree. If I'm anywhere in between any of these, I'll throw in the blue original metal plate and just say, well, I'm not gonna dust collect very well this time. And I'm also maybe gonna have some more tear out. But that is the benefit of these, is being able to minimize your tear out by supporting your wood right up to the side of the blade. My last little accessory on here is a magnetic shelf that lives under here. And that holds my uh, level box here. That way I'm able to measure when I am changing the um, bevel on my table saw. I have it out here at all times and it's because my hand's going to be here anyway. I can just grab this and go. Um, I think I got that at Harbor Freight, but it's a, it's a handy little tool. All right, so let's talk dust collection. That's probably a majority of the stuff I've done. I do not have a perfect dust collection system whatsoever. I'm constantly doing stuff to it. And there's something that I have planned that I'm gonna be doing pretty soon and I'll, I'll kind of give you a description. I'm gonna go over like a short progression on where I went with things. So obviously the guard that comes with this one has zero dust collection over it. So one of the very first things that I attempted to do was I purchased one of these guys off of Etsy. And so it's a 3D printed piece that enables you to hook up a uh, shop vac or you know a uh, small hose from your dust system. You know, it's weird putting this on from the back. Let's get it on. There we go, we got it. Um, so this sucks from directly over the blade. A problem with this solution that I didn't like was um, it screws in right here. And so it actually keeps the whole guard higher up in the air. And unless you're like really forming a it's not gonna form a seal, but you know, it's going to, to get as close as confined a space as possible, that creates max suction. The more space you have, the more dissipated your suction becomes. And so I attempted to put painter's tape over the, the air holes on the sides just to kind of focus the, the suction power, and it really didn't produce super great results for me, but this was where I started. And so then after this, we started focusing on the bottom of the table. Okay, we'll start in the front, we'll move our way around. So 
This one is an obvious one right here. And you say, Justin, what in the world is this? So this I've done to the front and the back. You have these large openings right here. So if you're interested in sealing off this cavity to collect the dust, you need to make it as airtight as possible, let's say. You need to confine the space. The more confinement you have, the stronger suction power becomes in a space. And so with this, I couldn't cover this over permanently because as you bevel your saw, this will move across here. So the solution that I came up with was a foam piece of mat. I think this is like the, the foam mat from Harbor Freight. And I super glued some neodymium magnets on it. And so what happens is it stays on here all the time. The magnets affix it to the, the housing right here. And as I bevel my blade, let me make sure I can do this. Okay. As I bevel my blade, it travels with it. Obviously it opens up on this side, um, but a majority of the time, let's face it, we're in 90 degrees. So it does cover up everything during that time. And it brings it back with it. And the magnets, you know, reaffix and it works out pretty good. So this does a really good job in covering this giant gaping hole. I've done the same on the back. So uh, again, the back one travels with it as well. The next thing I did was I got some of your super cheap, you'll notice all the dust that comes out with it. Boom. Your uh, stuff for uh, keeping pipes from freezing. So it's like a warming cover that goes over it. This stuff is super cheap. I think it's like a dollar or two for like an eight foot piece. So you can buy these pieces and they're very flexible and they're great at shoving up into spaces that maybe I don't wanna fill with wood. It might be too complicated, too difficult. So all around the saw, I've taken this foam at the tops, bottoms, anywhere that I had a gap in this cube right here that I'm collecting dust from. And I filled those gaps with these foams, again, to make it so that I have maximum suction inside this cube. So moving around to the back of the saw, again, you can see that I have the magnetized foam piece that covers up this large hole that's right here. And then I have the smaller hose going to a Y with a four inch hose going in to collect underneath. The strategy that I've done with dust collection, at least on the lower stage of this saw, is to make a air-ish tight cube right here. So as any sawdust falls down, if it isn't caught in the trough collector underneath the blade and it goes down below, it's going to get caught into a funnel that I've created and then go into this four inch hose. All of this leads to rigid piping that goes up to my ceiling and back down over to my dust collector. All right, so sorry for the shaky cam again. We're gonna get in there in the back of the saw. I did not clean this up. I wanted to show you what it really looks like on the inside. Not that I ever opened this guy up, but underneath the table when I first bought it, it just dumps the sawdust on the ground, which I was like, no, 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 this, this is not gonna work. So. What I did was I came inside with some really thin, um, oh, what is this, underlayment material. And so I cut trapezoid shapes so that I could form a funneling box inside. And then down at the bottom here, I took a uh, catch-all for an exterior, um, oh, what are those called? Like water drainage system in the plumbing department at Home Depot. And then underneath, I attached my four inch hose that comes in the back to that. So what I tried to do was to just basically make a box that didn't allow the dust to escape and then funnel said dust once it lands so that it goes down into this middle and then this middle sucks it down and takes it away. The main thing was to just keep the dust contained. Now, obviously inside the saw, you see like where there's edging and things that dust collects around these things. And you know, once a year I might open this up and hit it with some, some air just to get everything moving and get it down there. Usually as well, um, and this is why I rarely open this up, I, when this metal plate is up, I reach my hands through and tape 
that plate to this wall like I've done in the other ones. That way it kind of bridges that gap and I don't have sawdust going underneath. So, you know, underneath that structure. I don't want it going underneath because then it would fall into that cavity that I have all of that storage from the front side. So um, I would say it works. I, <laughs> when I opened it up, dust fell all over the floor, but normally it is not dusty outside of my saw back here. So um, while my application might not be perfect, I'm sure there's lots of flaws in it. The overall idea of making a containment situation underneath your saw to then funnel all of it to one spot to be able to remove is definitely a good idea. This dust collector that's built into it is very much ineffective overall, I'd say. And I've honestly even contemplated just taking this off and permanently sealing right here because um, the fact that I split these two reduces the benefit of both. But I, I would say that since this does directly draw right where the blade is, I've kept it there um, just because maybe it gives a little bit more of a uh, pointed directional suction when it's cutting the wood. And, um, but, you know, lots of ways to do it. All right, so I completed my goal of having pretty decent dust collection underneath the saw. At least let's think of it with the mindset of containment and removal. Um, it does that job. It's not spewing sawdust all over my floor. So then the next thing that I had to think about with dust collection was tabletop dust collection because underneath is only half the problem. The other amount is when you're on the back cut of the blade. So when you're first passing a piece of wood through and your blade is rotating, it's sending the chips down. But after you pass this mid mark and you get to about here, it's gonna clip it again here and that's shooting the sawdust up in my face. So primarily the reason you should wear a respirator if you do not have some sort of overhead dust collection with it. So I made something that kind of tries to emulate what some of the expensive overhead dust collection stuff does. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's bad, it's wrong, and don't do it. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna be one of those people on here that like tells you that I know everything, I do not. And um, I'm not gonna only just show you the good things, I'm gonna show you the bad. So I've worked quite a bit of time on this solution and it doesn't work. <laughs> Um, and it's dangerous and you could really hurt yourself. So I'm going to show you it so that other people don't make the same mistake and hurt themselves. So let's put that out there as a big thing, okay? Um, the overall concept of it works. And so uh, let's call it a prototyping process. I'm gonna keep working on this and I have an idea of what I'm gonna do, but the way I have it now is dangerous, okay? I said that. Um, so what I did was an overhead system that comes down uh, it's on an octagonal painter's pole, and that is so that it doesn't spin. I've drilled holes in it so that I can change how high and how low I have it. Um, so that's a good feature, right? The problem with this whole system is this pole, again, I have it hooked up to the ceiling. And so since it's such a long travel distance, there's wiggle. And that's not okay. Because when in order to properly use this to get the max amount of suction, it has to be practically touching the table, if not touching the table. And then I have these bristles right here. So if it's in this position, I could still slide a quarter inch piece of wood through here and it's going to make it all the way through. And it's created uh, like uh, a very good suctioned enclosed area. So it's gonna suck everything up here. It's not gonna shoot stuff out to the sides. It's gonna really do a good job at, at keeping everything in. But since this moves, if it moves enough where I hit the blade, destruction, injury, shrapnel flying in your face. So again, danger, do not do. Um, so because of that danger, because this stupid thing moves around like this, I have to keep it up higher. I have to keep it about two and a half inches off the table that way, I'm not hitting anything. Um, also, if I'm passing a piece of wood through, it's not moving this thing at all. So it's just floating in space, it doesn't move. 
because it's floating in space and there's such a big gap here, it reduces the amount of suction power that it has by like who knows how many times. I mean, it's, it's not sucking as much as it should. What it still does do though, is those chips on the back cut that are flying forward at you, they're hitting this. So I'm not getting hit by anything. Um, it basically makes it hit and drop. So the table does get dusty, but I'm not catching stuff in the face. I'm not getting a big shoot of sawdust out of my apron. So I like that, and that is good. If I'm cutting something like MDF, if I didn't have this here, you would see particulates raining down from the air well after your cut is over. Um, you smell cinnamon. You know, you'll know what I mean by that. And that's super dangerous. That's why you should wear a respirator, particularly when you're cutting MDF. When I use this, it actually grabs a lot of the particulates and I don't smell cinnamon. Um, it keeps everything very confined. The table has a film afterwards. You can go like this and you see all that dust that was kicked up there, but at least it's keeping it more in a contained enclosure, which is better for my health. Um, again, still should be wearing a respirator during that time. But, um, so it does have some functional use, but right now it's definitely not that good. My problem is that I can't bring myself to spend $600 on an aftermarket thing that goes over top this saw. This saw was $600 when I bought it. 700 now, but it's 600 when I bought it. I, I can't justify it to myself. So I'm like, I will build something. Um, I'm a maker. I gotta, I gotta build something for it. So I'm gonna continue working on this. I have an idea for bringing this over in a, in a better way. I even was thinking about this. I don't think that I'm gonna use this. I don't think it's strong enough, but this light arm that I have for my filming light right here, this moves on a hinge, it's tubular metal that goes across. So I'm trying to think something like that that I'm gonna attach here and run over, but um, you know, tough thing. Something that does really work well with this part of the system is the whole dust collection part before we get to the danger death box, right? So originally what I had done was I put a Y up on the pipe that's on my ceiling that goes back to my dust collector. And I ran that Y uh, with a hose down to that dust collector. But at this point then that's given me three branches off of that to this machine and it really degraded my suction capability too much to where it made everything work not so well. So at a certain point, you can't have so many openings to a tool. So I removed that Y and put it back to just these two in the back of the table saw. And I decided to do a rigid shop vac that would feed into the table saw. Now, since I was putting it here, I decided to put a Y that went over to two different blast gates so if I want to, I can hook up some of my small tools to this, or I can have the blast gate open to go over to this one. I'm pretty happy with how this works. I have one of those Home Depot little mini Cyclone guys. They work okay, you know? I mean, I have a huge drum Cyclone over there, so it's not as good as that. But for this application, I needed something small to fit, and it's good. Um, I also sewed in neodymium magnets into this blanket. I lined the entire cavity with moving blankets from Harbor Freight. And then neodymium magnets are on here, so as soon as I let it go, it snaps back into place every time. This acts as a sound baffle. Um, I like that it is, uh, it allows airflow through the blanket so you don't get overheating on this vacuum. I might have this running for a long period of time but it also dampens the sound and shop vacs are noisy. So any sound dampening for a shop vac is definitely something you want. I believe when I tested it, when I installed it, it reduced like eight decibels, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it is. So that was my table saw modding accessory video. Uh, I hope you got some cool ideas from it. I would love to hear from you if you want to put down in the comments cool ideas that you have for yours. I'm sure there's so many different things. I mean, there's a million ways that you can really take a affordable uh, entry-level table saw and make it into something way bigger than what you purchased um, that brings a lot more functionality to the table. I'm sure too, like a million jigs, a million jigs all over the place. Um, but if you've done anything cool, let me know down in the comments. Speaking of that, one of our uh, members, Spencer, contacted me saying he has this table saw and he was feeling that it was pretty high on him and uncomfortable to use. Um, it is 37 inches, it comes to my hip right here on me. So it is 
really at a comfortable level for me. If it's, um, he was saying maybe he might try and cut down the saw, like in the structure. So Spencer, my suggestion for you, since having a table saw at the correct height is incredibly important, you know, you're using it all the time, you wanna be able to be comfortable. I would disassemble the table saw right here. So this is basically just a tube that fits up into another tube and it's bolted there. So I would remove the bolts from all four of these and construct a cart that this can then sit on. Um, and so then make sure you construct the cart with the casters first and make sure that you're lowering it to a height that is most suitable for you. The one thing that I would make sure to say is you will often be exerting a lot of pressure on a table saw. So perhaps you want to look at the specialty feet that, um, you know, it can go up on a caster when you want it to, but then you kick it away and it goes down on a foot. So it sits that way. It's not sliding across your shop. Also, Make sure when you're putting this on the cart, you either put some sort of like wood piece that travels all the way around it just so it's incapable of sliding off that cart. Or maybe you wanna put some sort of fat dowel that fits this diameter up so then you can screw it in on that dowel on that cart. That way, again, you want this thing rock solid on that cart so it doesn't fall off. Um, we have a cool community with this channel that's already coming around. My channel is so new, but I already have so many wonderful people like Spencer in there um, who's participating. So make sure you like and subscribe with us so you can participate with everybody else. You can see when the next video comes out. I'm really trying to give you guys good content. So as always, stay safe in the shop and I'll see you in the next video.